Hey friends, it's Cindy from DIY Beautify, and today we're gonna work on some farmhouse risers. They're really cute little things you might've seen on Etsy or, uh, gosh, I don't even know where else, blogs maybe, or Pinterest. Little wood pieces with little legs, and they just elevate um, decor items and make them look really cute. I don't have a finished one to show you yet, so we're gonna do that together. But let me show you the supplies you're gonna to need to do this project. I'm actually gonna make two farmhouse risers today. I'm going to make a, a round one. So I have this round piece of wood that you can see it's got a beveled edge and I purchased this, I think at Michael's and it was like $1.50 maybe. And then I've got some little round balls. They're not beads, even though they have a hole on the bottom, you can see that the bottom is flat you see that kind of hard to get but they sit on this wood piece really well and we're going to use these on the bottom as little feet this would be super cute to elevate i lost a ball to elevate a mug say for fall or for upcoming christmas they would make really cute gifts um, a little cactus or a little plant would be really super cute on there too the other one i'm going to work on is bigger it's a rectangular one, and I bought this piece at Hobby Lobby, and you can see it has that same beveled edge. We're gonna actually flip it around so the beveled edge is on the bottom, but I kept the sticker that was on it. I paid $1.99, so these pieces are not expensive. In fact, the, the balls are probably more expensive, but I went ahead on Amazon, and I purchased several different, I've got wood beads in different sizes that I keep in jars because they just look cute and I like pretty organization in my office. You can also get these pieces at craft stores. If you're going out right now, that's great, but I love being able to order off Amazon and have something delivered the next day so I can get my craft done. So let me just walk you through the process of what we're gonna do. We are going to give a light um, stain wash to our wood pieces. We're not going to use stain, we're going to use paint, but the effect is the same as stain and I'm going to show you with these farmhouse beads I made at Valentine's Day, that little heart. That's the color that we're going to be doing. Um, so we want to have, rather than the raw wood, we're going to give it a nice wood stain and then we're going to dry brush it with um, white. And I'm using products from Deco Art today. They're Burnt Umber Acrylic Paint. Love this color, it's so farmhouse friendly. And then I'm using the white, pure white satin enamels paint. I didn't have any white chalk paint, otherwise I probably would have used that, but this is what we're gonna start with. So the first thing, I guess I should talk through the rest of the supplies you're gonna need. You'll need the, obviously your wood parts, and I'll do a supplies list on my blog post that I'll link to below. You're gonna need some kind of glue that will quickly glue your pieces together. Don't use hot glue, it's just not going to be permanent. I love this DAP. It is perfect for this product. It sticks everything together and like adheres it in 30 seconds or less. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. Because when I was thinking about feet for this piece, I really like the looks of those ones that have like a they're narrow at the bottom. It just looks kind of vintage and antique -y. but I didn't have any and I didn't, you know, I'm trying to quarantine right now or just stay home as much as possible. So I looked at what I had in my stash and I did buy some stuff on Amazon, but I made my own legs and I've already pre-glued these just so that we can move a little quicker through this project. And I know it looks like a snowman, but it's actually gonna be turned upside down for the feet. And you can see that this large ball is flat on the bottom, which will be perfect to glue it to the wood rectangle. And then these two are actually beads. They do have holes all the way through. <clears throat> and I thought I was gonna have to buy ones that were flat, but these actually I think worked better. They stuck really well and I've got my four legs all ready to go over here. So the other, <clears throat> pardon me, the other things that you're gonna need You'll need a foam brush to do your 
um, staining with the burnt umber. And then you'll need a damp rag to wipe it off, just using some shop towels. Then you'll need your white chalk paint, or you can use probably leftover house paint if you have it. And you'll need a paintbrush, a good paintbrush. And then I just keep, if you like my paint palette, I just keep a paper plate, a sturdy paper plate for my paint. And let me see, I think that is it. So I'm gonna set everything up and we'll get started. I'm gonna show you how to do this. Okay, I forgot to mention that you'll also need a piece of sandpaper or a sanding block in case your bases are a little bit rough. I did find I had to sand around the edges of this. Just, I mean, it takes like 30 seconds just to make sure that, um, you know, you have a smooth edge that you're gonna work with. So I'm going to rotate my phone and we're gonna get started. Bear with me. All right, a little bit more. Okay, so I'm gonna give my burnt umber a little shake and pour some out on my plate. Now you're not gonna lead a lot of this brown paint. And remember, you're going to be wiping most of it off. That's how we <clears throat> achieve. <clears throat> I'm sorry, something in my throat today. That's how we achieve this stained look. So get a little on your brush. And you need to work in sections because we're not using a lot of paint. It's going to dry quite quickly. So brush it on. And then take your damp paper towel or whatever you have and just wipe off. What I love about this is you're still getting the look of a stain because the wood grain shows through, but you don't have to deal with the smell of the stain and it dries much quicker. This way you're able to use your product or project, you're able to finish your project quicker. Sorry, I'm not talking today. My, I can't speak. Normally, I'm such a perfectionist, I would want to do another take, but you know what? I don't think it matters that much. I don't think you're here for perfection. All right, so again, I did another strip, and then I'm just wiping the excess off. Flip it around and do the rest. Now, I'm going to also have to do all the little feet for my risers. And I'm going to do the beveled edges. So literally I'm gonna paint this whole thing brown only to go ahead and paint it white, but I'll show you why. I like to have a little distressing on my pieces and this raw pine or whatever it is, wood, is not gonna give that farmhouse look when I try to distress. So just by doing this simple step, I mean, it really is not taking that long. Then when I go to distress my white paint, I'm going to have a nice brown that shows through. So you saw how quickly that went. And yes, I when I removed the sticker, it left a mark. But that's not a big deal because we'll just paint over top of that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish um, doing my brown stain with my paint on these pieces. And I'll pop back in when I'm done and they're dry. We can... I'm popping back in to show you how my painting is going, my painting slash staining. And one thing I realized that I did not tell you and that would have been helpful when I started painting the feet was some kind of skewer to hold these on. Might have been a little easier because you can see that my hands are getting very dirty. But it's just paint. I'm not worried about that. So I thought I'd show you this last one. I'm just painting on a coat and then I'm going to wipe it off. I just did this whole one because I found that there were some areas where I was going back and adding a little more brown so I didn't wipe it all off at the same time. Now when you're wiping this paint off to give the look of stain, you do want to wipe in the direction of the grain because you don't want to have just a big blob. Of brown paint. You want it to look like it's stained. 
which I think we can agree that that looks pretty good. Now these are cheap balls, so they're not made of good quality wood. That's why there's those variations, the light and the dark. But I think they're gonna make really cute feet. In fact, I may leave these ones brown because I like them so much. All right, I'm gonna run and wash my hands and I'll be right back. All right, it's time to move on to the painting process. You do wanna make sure that your brown or burnt umber is completely dry. Um, just so that you don't have any bleed through as you're painting the white. Now this is where you have a choice. You need to decide if you want this piece to be all white and then you go back and maybe just do some stress, distressing with the sandpaper along the edges or you could right off the bat just dry brush it which means that you're giving it sort of a not a completely um, thick coat or a complete coat of white paint. Sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me today. I am just, the words are not coming. This is not a professional video, obviously, and we'll just keep going. All right, so to dry brush, you're just gonna dip the tips of your brush in paint. And then I have a paper towel. Sorry, there's not much room here to show all these steps. And you're just gonna wipe off most of the paint on the paper towel. So when you take it to your piece, you can see that it's just giving it a really light coat. And while I like this look with the brown showing through, it's not really the vision I had in my head for this piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue painting it with my, remember I'm using satin enamels. And the thing I love about this paint is that the sealer is built right into it. So it's kind of like using chalk paint and then wax, but you're doing it all in one step. So I'm gonna do more of a thick coat. And then I'm going to go back with a sand paper, sand sanding sponge. See what I mean with the words? What is up today? I'm going to go back with the sanding sponge and remove some of the white paint. So I'm not gonna do a total thorough coat covering it, but I'm gonna do it so most of the brown stain is covered. And obviously I'm gonna have to let this dry before I can turn it over and do the back and the sides. Otherwise, I will be really messy. All right, so I'm gonna set this part aside to dry. And let's do one of the, oh, I think I'm gonna keep these brown. Let's do one of the mini feet. Now again, I'm thinking I might go grab a skewer because <laughs> holding onto it while you're painting it is not the best idea, so I'll be right back because I forgot to bring a skewer into my office. All right, I've got my skewers with my little wood balls on them. One thing I wanna show you, and I saw this tip somewhere on the web and I can't remember where, but the hole sometimes is too big, like you can get it on, but it, it falls off. And the trick is to put a little tiny blob, can you see that? of hot glue on the end of your skewer and let it dry and then it acts kind of like a little rubber stopper and now this baby ain't going anywhere so it's ready for paint and then I can just hold on to the skewer and turn that around rather than getting all messy isn't that brilliant so thank you to whoever thought of that it wasn't me and I would give you props if I remembered who you were but I don't so I love those little tricks and tips that are just so simple and you just kind of think, why didn't I think of that when someone shares them? And then you end up, I can see myself using this tip for a whole bunch of projects. I've got some um, beaded garland ideas coming up for fall and Christmas and definitely save the fingers from getting messy. Plus, when your paint is wet, you don't want to be touching it. 
All right, so these guys, and you can see I haven't even, oops, that one popped off. I haven't needed to re-dip my brush yet. All right, that one just needed to be pushed a little bit further on. Just using the paint that was already on my brush. Sorry, my dog is going crazy out there. She probably sees a cat in the backyard. I'm gonna go tell her to shut up. I'll be right back. While we're waiting for my white paint to dry, I thought I would give my little feet just a really quick coat of dark wax just to help enhance the color. This one has been waxed and buffed. And you can see how shiny it is. I'm gonna compare it to the one that I haven't done yet. There's not a great deal of difference, but this just looks more finished. So if you wax, wanna wax something, and any furniture paste wax will work. I've used the Minwax that you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's with great um, success. I use that for years. I've tried any Sloan. And basically you just take a rag and you rub on, you know, as even as a coat as you can get. And then you really just wait for a few minutes or even seconds for it to kind of set up. And then you buff the excess off. If you visit my blog, www.diybeautify.com, I have tons of furniture posts where I have chalk painted and then waxed um, pieces of furniture from dressers to beds to tables. And I know a lot of people are really more sold on poly because it's more durable, but I love the look that wax gives when you buff it. It just gets this beautiful sheen like you can see on this piece. Isn't that pretty? It just gives like sort of a time-worn finish. So I'm gonna go ahead and buff this one now. And really you're just rubbing the excess wax off. It's really no more difficult than that. Okay, and just like that, this one is done as well. And you can, isn't this cute? I mean, three balls. That is going to be the cutest little leg. It looks like a furniture piece that, you know, would be a lot more expensive. You can see right where the balls connect that I do have some pale spots. And I think that that is the excess glue that dried there and I couldn't get the paint to cover. So just something to keep in mind when you use your glue, you want to be very um, sparing with it. All right, I am just getting myself all dirty today. I want to check and see if my pieces are ready for a second coat of white paint. I'm pretty sure they are. Yes, so this one's dry and I haven't painted the back yet so that's what we're going to do next. I'm just going to see if there was some paint left on my brush but there really wasn't. I love how this a project like this just transforms these everyday little pieces of things that you find at the chalk or the craft store. They elevate them into something worthy of furniture. Give them a, I don't know what I'm trying to say. You know what I'm trying to say, right? <laughs> okay, we're gonna put that down to dry. I'm gonna wipe my hands off again because for some reason I'm just getting coated in paint today. I am a messy painter, that is true, but today just seems extra bad for some reason. All right, this one feels dry as well, mostly. So, and you can see I'm not doing heavy coats of paint. Really use what you have on your brush before you load it up again just easier that way and it dries faster. I'm definitely going to come back and give these pieces a second coat of paint though.
just because, like I said, I want them to be a little more white than brown. I just want to have like a, a hint of brown on the edges so that it looks like something old that's just gotten used and loved a lot and the finish has, the paint finish has come off a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna set this down. I think my table is dirty. I was using it to make some faux whipped cream toppers. And if you've ever worked with spackle, you know that when that stuff dries, it's very crumbly. And I neglected to clean my table off properly before I started this project, so. All right, we're into waiting stage number two for the paint to dry. And then once it's dry and I've uh, painted a second coat, I'm gonna show you how to put it all together and complete these farmhouse risers. Let's finish these risers. I'm going to do my sanding now. Like I said, the paint that I used, um, the satin enamels, has a, a sealant built right into it. But if you're using chalk paint, I would recommend definitely putting a poly or a wax on this top piece. You don't want that to get, um, you know, damaged from items that you're putting on it. I'm going to go ahead and do my distressing now just to show you what I had in mind. I like these sanding sponges because they're flexible and they're just really easy to work with. So I'm just rubbing it along the edges to reveal some of that brown. You can see what I'm doing right there. I'm not doing major distressing because I, like I said, I wanted these risers to be mostly white. Just a little bit. Just to give it the look of, like I said, kind of a time-worn antique. All right, so let's go ahead and glue our feet on. I'm gonna flip it over. My feet have been stained and waxed already. I didn't do a second coat on the bottom because no one's really gonna see it, but I did just give it a light sand just to remove any roughness. All right, so let's see how good this project product works. gonna put the paint or the glue on the bottom the flat piece and stick it down all right I think this is gonna be so adorable I can't wait to use it in my home especially for with fall coming up Okay, like I said, this stuff dries super fast. It's very convenient. It's like using hot glue, but you know how sometimes hot glue rubs off? This isn't gonna rub off. This is pretty permanent once you've glued your item and it has dried. I mean, they're already sticking. If you do get a little on your fingers, it is like, what's that stuff called? Crazy glue. It'll dry and you'll have like a little skin on your finger that it'll take a few days to completely get off. So it's best not to get any on your fingers. I just got to check. I think they're stuck already if I needed to shift any around. But are you ready to flip it around and see how cute it is? Look at that. Isn't that adorable? I love how those little legs turned out. That's exactly the look that I was wanting. I can't get over just how inexpensive 
and easy that was to do. All right, let's do the same. Let's put the feet on our little round riser. And again, I'm gonna give it just a light sanding. If you don't sand after you chalk paint, you're missing out on achieving that buttery soft finish. It just really makes your pieces feel nice. Gets rid of any roughness. All right, so just that really quick sanding on the edges. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. All right, so again, let's flip it over. And I'm gonna grab the little balls that we did. And we are gonna do the same thing. We're gonna glue them. See if I can get them to be equal distance apart. That's harder than it looks. I think, I think that looks good. All right, so again, a little bit of glue them down. You really just have a couple seconds to move whatever it is that you're gluing before it's permanent. So just keep that in mind. Kind of want to have your position already picked out and marked if you need to. Go ahead and do a little dot where you're going to Glue it. Okay. Those guys are stuck. Look at that. How stinking adorable, right? Little Ray Dunn mug on top, sitting on my kitchen cabinet or wherever. Yeah, these turned out cute, you guys. I'm really happy with these. I will definitely be making more. I think these would make fantastic um, Christmas gifts. If you did find a mug, you could include this with the mug in the gift set. So keep that in mind when you're looking for affordable Christmas ideas.